Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, it's into the grand classic, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our play-by-email challenge against the devilish Mr. Lodrick, and it is now February 25th, 1942. This is the setup phase. Uh, we've just watched the combat resolutions, and we'll go around and check out things. We'll go look at the Prince of Wales. we got to check that out, right? Uh, see how the Prince of Wales is doing uh, over in Colombo, and we'll see where other action is around the map. Now, my plan, my grand plan here is to get over to the U.S. East Coast. We'll see what happens. As you know, uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I get focused on something, and we don't always make it to the to the point where I want to go talk about. Um, okay, uh, last turn we ran about 58, 57 sorties. Uh, the Japanese ran 88, 53. That's been kind of a normal breakdown, eight to five or so. Um, so not quite one and a half to one. Uh, air to air losses. We took 44 last turn. He took zero. Now a lot of that was in the Dutch East Indies. Uh, we're just kind of throwing planes into the grist mill. You know, I always say, well, we're going to lose them anyway, but we'd like to get better results than this. Uh, certainly destroyed on the field, zero and zero. Destroyed by flak. We destroyed four Japanese aircraft by flak. Uh, operational losses. We only had one last turn. Uh, the Japanese had eight, and you can see he's surging into the lead there on operational losses, which is really what you would expect. I mean, He's running offensive missions. He should be taking more operational losses than we would be, uh, although we are running a few, uh, you know, I mean, most of these air to air losses were, uh, you know, offensive missions this time. But that being said, you know, he's flying over much more dangerous territory than we are, so you would expect him to have more. And we finally do have him with more political points. We have 495. As I always say, you need about 650 to 700 to buy out a regiment. Uh, when I say buy out, means moving it out of its kind of restricted uh, area of command. Uh, if you want to change that, you need about 650 points for a full regiment. Now, other things you need quite a bit less, but uh, I always think of 650 as a, kind of a benchmark. Uh, Japanese score 14,834, and we're at 7527. So again, a little less than two to one. You know, we got to keep it less than four to one. Uh, it will get to three to one uh, almost assuredly. Uh, so right now, you know, look, we're not doing as well as I would like to be doing, not as well as we would be doing against the AI or a player that wasn't quite as good as Lodric, but Lodric has proven to be very tough competition. I love it. Uh, allied base is controlled. We have 479, the Japanese 358. So we got about 120 more bases than the Japanese at this point in time, although he's got a bunch of easy ones to pick up. So eventually he will take the lead there. Allied aircraft points lost. We've lost a little over 1,000 points. He has lost 618 points. Army point losses. Okay, let's just move beyond that. <laughs> That's a big number. Uh, Allied ships sunk 389. I think I've mentioned in some other episode that I, I looked up at some point on Wikipedia and the Allies lost, uh, I think, over 900 ships historically. Well, we're a good ways towards uh, halfway there, so you know we gotta we gotta put the reins on that. Japanese ships sunk that we know about are six. Uh, we think there are several more, including some subs. Let's look at the ships sunk last turn, and we had none. Gosh, I loved it. Look at that. That's beautiful gr slate gray right there. Um, Let's keep that up. How about that? I, I liked that. Uh, well, we could look through the aircraft losses. Why not? Let's look at uh, today. Today, what was lost? We lost a lot of those 22 Falcons, Dutch East Indies, Dutch East Indies, Dutch East Indies. Okay. Uh, Ida, Sonia, Zeros. Now, these are some of the operational losses he took this time. Love to see those Zeros go down. Uh, more of that, please. Uh, mainly because of his pilots. You know, the, he can build more airframes, but uh, he has a lack of good pilots after his initial great pilots. So anyway, um, those were the aircraft destroyed. Uh, reinforcements that are coming in. We get some Blenheims at Aden. Really haven't been able to throw them in the fray. I mean, we're using them a lot for naval search right now uh, because we don't have too many places to, to do ground bombing, and that's what the Blenheims are really used for. So... 
you know, we just haven't been able to put them out there yet uh, in their most useful role. Buffaloes, Wildcats, Dauntlesses, those are all Marine, uh, U.S. Marines uh, aircraft. Now they're coming into San Diego, could use these as just training aircraft. What is their command? Yeah, it's Air West. You see here, Squadron U.S. Marines. Uh, as someone had corrected me before, these the V in front of you is in front of this is telling you uh, Marines. These are Marine aircraft. Uh, Wildcat Dauntless. Now it doesn't mean they're really any different than uh, what you get, you know, naval wise when it says navy of course the marines is part of the navy uh but it just is differentiated a little bit now so all of these should be carrier capable they are um they're <coughs> however not carrier trained you can be training pilots with these groups you get some out at pearl and midway and you get a bunch at san diego here right um hurricane 2b trops you know i love those we get them just automatically in here at colombo we don't even have to ship them down from Aiden, but this is the K Squadron. If I remember correctly, these guys do not have a lot of experience when they come on the board. They're kind of a, a virgin unit, uh, but the K Squadron will be at Colombo in about four days. We also get some swordfishes, and you see the Hornet is on its way. Okay, uh, let's go to ship availability, see what we have coming in. As you know, I always have to double do that. There we go. Uh, okay, we get an A. I love these AKVs uh, to load planes on. The Injadine, okay, sure. Um, we get a bunch of these submarines. We talked about these in the past. Uh, they're short range subs, uh, but they don't carry the Mark 14 torpedo, they carry the Mark 10, and so they actually are lethal. And uh, I like to get those out by Suva, Pago, Nomaya, those kind of places, because they can wreak some havoc out that way. But you got to skip them out base to base to base because they have a very short range. Let's see if it shows us uh, endurance, 5,000. That's that's not going to get you very far out in the Pacific. Uh, you know, an AS coming in, a bunch of cargo, some destroyers, some tankers, a lot of tankers in at Abaddon. Uh, that's a good thing. So that's ship availability. Ship withdrawal. I still have to get the Dickman out of here. Uh, the Joseph T. Dickman. I put it in a task force. Um, oh gosh, the sort always sorts the wrong way. Here you can see it. The Joseph T. Dickman. It's negative one day right now. So we're losing 20 points every day that it's on the map. We have to get it off. And you may say, well, take it off the map. And that does seem like this, the easy answer, but right now it's got troops on it. So we're paying a little extra for the Dickman to be out there. 20 points, you know, I mean, we just can't let it go on too long. Uh, so anyway, the ship withdrawal, just never, you know, lose sight of this. You will get some pop-up warnings such as, you know, you're losing this many points this turn because that ship's out there. Uh, ground reinforcement schedule, you know what I'm looking for, chunking uh san francisco seattle ceylon command gets a couple of aa brigades or we get one in no we get both of these into colombo uh ceylon command fantastic i mean the more aa we have at colombo obviously the better got to try to protect the prince of wales if we can and everything else that's there everybody chunking tonight gets 25 257 here uh that comes on in three days boy i love that let's look for more of them because they always make me happy uh, we also get an Indian division in here, 226, and a couple of Indian brigades. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, we need all that, and then another uh, in 12 days we get, and you just keep getting these as the Chinese, 257 assault value units at Chongqing, let's say like once a week. Um, so that's excellent. Okay, uh, ground reinforcement schedule, we looked at that, withdraw industry, okay, I, I think that's good. Let's go look around the map. And the first thing I want to go over to is Colombo. And let's just go check out Colombo, what's going on here. You can see we got a decent number of aircraft. We've got some Blenheims running naval search. We've got some Albacores on naval attack. They're torpedo bombers, as you see there, TB. Uh, we've got uh, five Hurricane 2A Trops. We've got five more Hurricane 2A Trops. We've got eight Hurricane 2B Trops, and we've got some Fulmar 2s, the fighter bomber operating as fighters. So all told, what is that? 8, 16, uh, 21, 
26 fighters here. It's not enough, but it's something. It's something. <laughs> you know, I, I guess it, it's not nothing. Uh, we need more fighters over Colombo, you know, with your fighters over here in this theater. Colombo, Calcutta, Rangoon. You know, you just draw your triangle. That's where you need them. I also keep some at Madras because ultimately, if you look at Madras, it turns into a level 7 port. You know, we're expanding the port. It's half the way there to a level 7 and becomes a major port. And so you want to keep some there too, especially if at some point the Japanese are able to take Ceylon. At least you have a level 7 port over here. Um, of course, Calcutta is down here, and you would think Calcutta is a level, level 7 port, but it is not. It is only a 5, and you can only take it to a 6. You know, natural 3, you can only go 3 above that, so you can only take it to a 6. And so, you know, Madras, I always like to build into a 7. But why was I here at Colombo? Well, let's see. We got these two new AA units. That's wonderful really needed those we've got the eastern fleet naval headquarters out here okay we've got the 222 group raf that gives some aviation support now that only gives 16 the colombo fortress gives us 59 and a lot of times these fortresses you know think of it as just the kind of the usual military base that was there probably even pre-war um and they've got you know airfields they've got airplane mechanics and whatever else sitting out there so you get a nice aviation support of 59 uh but let's go to the ships we've got three akls sitting here i mean these we batch up and we try to put into rangoon a lot of them get sunk some of them don't uh that's kind of the long story short there but if we go to the damaged ships what do we have here the prince of wales look at her she's gorgeous uh, glorious uh, and gorgeous 99 system damage 52 float damage well this is the big one I mean look she can sit in the shipyard all day with 99 system damage that's not a big deal but the 52 float that's how you sink now we're not on fire we do have a little engine damage but I mean you know given this who cares uh, we do not have any fires active fires right now so she's not gonna go down um as a, yet yet right uh she's on fire you can see that system damage 99 flood damage 52 and all of its major uh so this is not going to be going anywhere you know and then you see current repair estimate no repair because we don't have enough repair here first of all let's just look at the docking capability uh, the capacity at Colombo is only 14, I, I said docking, I meant shipyard. Uh, capacity is 14,000. We're, you, you know, the one in the shipyard, the Prince of Wales, is 35,490. So we're stuck in a situation um, where we can't move it. Uh, it's got too much float damage, really. I don't dare take it out of here. It does show a speed of 12. So I guess it's possible we could try to batch it up, but you are taking a big risk i mean they can't steer the damn thing and it's got over half float damage all of which is major and so it's telling us the shipyard is not big enough to repair it we don't have anything else to repair it the only thing we really could do is bring a repair ship in here but that cannot repair major damage and so we're stuck i mean i, I don't you know i've been sitting here racking my brain of like something else we could do with it um the only two options we have are we batch it up into its own task force or put it with a destroyer or something so we don't get sunk by a sub, but, uh, and try to float it to Cape Town or Bombay. I mean, we could try to put it up in Bombay, but it's a big question, will it make it? Uh, you know, I usually say you don't float them out there above 60, but a big ship like this, 52, I don't think it's worth taking the risk. Now you may say, well, the real risk is he's gonna come back with his carriers at some point, and destroy it and that is certainly a risk and so but for now i'm just going to leave it here because i'd rather take that risk where it's not quite as immediate as if i put it out here and it just goes to the bottom of the sea so i'm going to leave it here that's the prince of wales uh, we've got other damaged ships of course the platypus uh, that really makes me mad because you know again these as's 
these damn ships, uh, usually they have a huge victory value, but now this one's 11. Some of these have like 30 in victory value. I really don't feel like submarine tenders were quite that important, but uh, hey, okay, sure. Now this one's only 11. That actually brightens my mood a little bit. Okay, let's go look at some other things around the map. Uh, not much to say up here. We talk about it all the time, Abaddon and Aiden. Uh, we've got a lot of things out here at Socotra right now, just because I'm building up Socotra a little bit, because I have a lot of these tankers or uh, things out of Aiden, you know, troops and whatnot that I want to take to Australia. I have them come on the map here, and then I have them retire to Cape Town through the penalty box. Um, and so I'm just building up Socotra a little bit, just in case, I don't know, there's some Japanese activity out here, and we need to have a base to go to. I wanted to have a little fuel out here and whatnot, so I'm just dropping some stuff off, and we can go and look what's here. We have the DD Hotspurs out here. Then we have a massive transport task force. It's got 21st Australian, 25th Australian, 18th, 21st so on so forth uh i've got its home port at aden but that's not where it's gonna go it's gonna go to cape town um and we're gonna take this and send it all the way to australia eventually uh but it's just so much safer to go this way through the the pipes because he you know he can't get at us in there uh, and so we'll go down to Cape Town, probably, uh, I say probably, I guess we'll have to refuel, and then we'll take that either to Perth or Melbourne. So off that goes. We've also, I think, got another, yeah, we've got a battleship and a DD out here. We've got the Revenge. Um, I think I'll send the Revenge with that group, um, because I want to get the Revenge and the Ramillies, which is already at Cape Town, headed out to Australia uh, if we can. So... Anyway, we'll we'll get that, you know, put together. I could just do it this way, right? Meet task force, and then let's find the big transport task force. You just kind of hover over these, and it'll tell you which one you're over. And it would be this one. We'll just have it meet that task force, and then we'll have the merge. Perfect. So they'll go into that transport task force. You know, it can protect it a little bit on the way to Perth. But I want to get some battleships out by Australia uh, because he's had some raiders heading up and down the coast, keeping us from getting into Darwin. He has not brought his carriers down there. Uh, it's been a couple battleships have harassed us. A lot of cruisers have been down there and whatnot. And he's just blowing little uh, cargo ships out of the water. And I want to spring a little trap on him if we can. Uh, we've looked enough at India. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it this time because I do want to get over and look at other stuff, the South Pacific and the U.S. Uh, West Coast. So uh, Rangoon, hey, look, he's been bombing, bombing, bombing. He's eventually going to get an army moving somewhere. I don't know if he'll come over land here. Probably the best way for him to come is up through Mulmine and then to Pagu. The only problem for him there is he's got to cross one river, two rivers, but I guess he has to do that this way too so really the best way for uh, Japanese players to come around here you take mole mine now all of a sudden you know you got the supply flowing out here down the road anyway uh, because his big challenge getting into Rangoon is going to be a supply problem you can see the mountain range here it's just very hard to get a big army moving over here whether it be his or later on if he takes rangoon and we land you know at tavoy or mole mine later on to try to take it back this is just a very defensible area on the map you know you don't have a lot of good roads that run into it you've got this mountain range you've got this mountain range up through burma you got to get over the mountains get down here onto this you know uh valley into the into the uh, rivers and then on to the Bay of Bengal and once you get down here though you don't have supply really uh, it's a tough go it's a tough go so okay well I mean that's Rangoon he's if we just go a little further south he's obviously taken Singapore he's landing on the coast in Sumatra uh, he's here at Oosthaven now he's going to take he's decided his way to Palembang is to take Oosthaven and then move north uh, but he's taking these bases back here. You can see he's sitting here at Madon. We have a halfway decent force here, uh, but it's not going to matter. He'll shove us out of there as he wants. He's landed in Semarang. Obviously, he could go north or south here in Java. We don't know which, but you can see all of his activity 
headed this way. So there are going to be a lot more troops uh, in Java uh, over the next few turns. He's at Bally Poppin now, and you can see he's got a task force out here, several of them actually. Uh, he's looking for subs. He's got a lot of some sub chasers here. Um, he will be eventually getting tankers in here to cart the fuel off, you know, the spoils of war. Uh, so we're going to get some submarines up in this area instead of being down here. Look, we he's already landed, you know. I mean, we can still try to pick off a transport or two here, possibly. Uh, but one of the groups of subs needs to get up in this area. So as he brings tankers or cargo ships to come get that fuel, maybe we'll get lucky and get one or two. Um, up in the Philippines, he's now moved into the hex of Cagayan. Very difficult to take, though. He's got a bad supply situation. We've got a pretty bad one, but we actually have a decent number of troops here. I mean, if you look, we've got a lot of counters anyway. The assault strength, though, is 412. So as long as these guys aren't starving out, and they may, um, but as long as they're not starving out, they can put up a decent fight. So he still has not completely taken the Philippines. You can see we've got a couple other bases up here, but these will fall like dominoes just because these guys are completely out of supply. If we go up to China, um, you know, we're holding the Wu Chao Kui Lin uh, Nanning Triangle here. Uh, this is kind of, you know, one front of the war. Now he's he's got an army here he's bringing... Looks to be moving this way. I'm not really sure where he might be going there. I mean, if you're going to come attack Wu Chao, you don't really do it from this direction. You come up from Canton. He may be trying to get over to this roadway, cross over. But again, we've got rivers here to the south and the west uh, of these bases. So that makes it a little more difficult to come from this way. So I don't know where he's going. Uh, these are the two southeastern stacks that get bombed. Time after time after time after, I mean, you know, I don't even know how many times these two stacks have been bombed. I was trying to get them both out. Now I'm heading out to Fu Chao with this stack. You can see the indentation where they're headed. And this stack, I'm going to try to get on this road and cross over, let's say here, get it all the way back to Henyang. We still have this axis here, Chengsha, Henyang, uh, of being on the front line of that. Ai Cheng. Has got the most troops we've got in the game. You can see it's over 3,000 uh, in assault value. That is a lot of Chinese men out there. Uh, certainly, you know, they've got manpower. Uh, there is a lot of men right here, but you can see we've always, and we're always going to have a supply problem at Ai Chang. There's no obvious way into it, and you get down to a minor road here that has to cross a couple of rivers. Uh, there's no road that connects up to Chongqing, so it's notoriously difficult to get enough supply into Ai Chang. We just need to monitor that. We may want to split off a smaller force and let's say put it on this main road so he doesn't have an obvious way to kind of come up and try to get to the plateau. We've still got this massive force here. What's its assault? Well, this is our biggest stack on the map. 3212 on the assault value here. You can see I'm, I'm on this roadway. Now, you may say, no, you're not. Well, you are. I mean, you're in the hex. Uh, so we're blocking supply this way. Um, but he, he can get some supply into Cyan down <clears throat> this way, but it's important that we block this off. Why is that? Because we really want to stop him from moving north. He's got this group out here by Lan Chao. I doubt that they would be strong enough to take this, but if he can move his massive armies, which is what he has down here north, I mean, Lan Chao is worth 300 points to the Japanese, signing is also worth 300 points. <coughs> Excuse me. That is 600 points total between these two bases. Super important, especially when you go down here and you look at like Changsha, which you may think, oh gosh, that's so important, right? It's only worth 60 to the Japanese. This is worth 600. And so you have got to get up here and try to stop him from coming due north. And believe me, with the way is thorough as Lodric is, he knows that. It's probably only a matter of time here. He has taken Yanan. I split these forces. I'm trying to get this force on a road hex to block supply coming in from this way. Then we would have it blocked both ways, and we could maybe start to starve out this group at Cyan a little bit and at least slow them down. That's the hope. That's the hope. Uh, we've got all kinds of forces back here. I mean, if you look at Chongqing, 
you can see he's at 1679. If we look at attach two, I usually leave most central reserve things here, although I'll send out some of the artillery. I mean, these are really, truly your reserve. Uh, so I like to leave them back here if I can, but we're in a little bit of a pickle right now in China. So like first group army, these two, now they're not that strong, but we can send those out. Now, how do I go about that? I know a lot of people get very confused up in China. How do I go about that? So let's go first group army, all right? Who is that attached to? Where should it be? Which war area is it under? Well, this is what I do. I go up here and we'll take off all nationalities, all nationalities, there we go. And I'm gonna take off all units as well. Then I'll go to the Chinese green and I'll go to headquarter units okay so now we've got all chinese headquarter units first group army let's go find where the heck it is okay and we can always click on the hex now it says it's at chungking it will also show you if it's in a hex so first group army the headquarters as is at chungking this also shows you its war area command in this case, it's Central Reserve. So we can really send that everywhere, anywhere or everywhere. Or this could be the army we just leave at Chongqing to ultimately protect it. Um, that might be what I would like to do. What about these other headquarters? You know, you can look around here. What else is at Chongqing? China Command. Okay. We also have seventh group army which is part of second war area okay so this we probably want to get moving on but where is second war area where should you be sending it right well let's bring this up again oh i guess we're already on it and let's go look for second war area there it is and then you can click on the hex where it is there it is this is where second war area is so we have this group army that's at chungking now you know send it down this road so it can go meet up with its war area and that's how i keep china straight i kind of figure out where i want a war area right so like this war area is actually the red chinese i think control this one red chinese and eighth war area okay so this will i'll always try to send the group armies to be with their war area um, which is the higher command and it's an easy way to do it is just go up here to list ground units you know click off of uh, all units click off of all nations and just go chinese and headquarters units click on the location and you can go find these things very quickly like third war area where is it 8154 we come down it's right here okay and if we go down here there it is third war area and then we have 10th group army which is part of third war area we have 23rd which is part of third war area and we have 25th which is part of third war area and there you go and you know then if you get anything up here you know a headquarters um that says uh, a group army headquarters that says it's part of third war area i'll go try to match them up like that and that way they get their command bonuses you need every single advantage in china you can get uh because you don't have many all right let's go down to australia what's going on out here uh not a whole lot look at all that blue We've got uh, a transport that's coming in. Does it have escort? It does not. So we'll want to send escort out to meet it. Uh, so I go through this every single turn because you just don't have enough escorts out here. We're still on ships under repair. Let's get to that. All right. Well, crud. We don't really have, we don't have any destroyers here, which is what I like to send out. We'll come back to that in a second. Is this, what is it? Oh, this is our big australian force and if we look at this this is you know it does have some american ships in it but it's three cruisers a bunch of light cruisers a bunch of destroyers uh, i batch them all together they're safest that way but you can peel off uh the destroyers if you want and let's go look at what we've got here the bulmer's a two the john d edwards is a two the paul jones is a two i'm talking ant anti-sub the whipple man i love the whipple uh sure let's form a new task force 
Let's make it an ASW combat task force. That brings up our destroyers because they are a, the only ASW uh, ships in that task force. And let's just take the Whipple. All right, done. Now you've got the Whipple in its own. It's Perth and Perth, so it wants to just go straight back into port. Nope, let's not do that. Let's say meet task force. Let's meet that task force that does not currently have an escort. We'll merge it when it gets there and it can escort it into Perth. Whatever the orders of this task force are will be the new orders of this when it merges into it. So this is the controller, right? Because this is the one this is the ship doing the merging. The task force being merged with their orders control. And so it's going to be going into Perth. That's why you see this meeting up with it here right because it's going to be moving this way the destroyer comes in the whipple and it says hey what's up guys let's go have a good time in perth all right um anything else in australia interesting i'm trying to get more supply up here because darwin eventually is going to come under attack certainly and it's only got five thousand in supply so i keep sending these little task forces up here now this one already dropped off now it's coming back. It's just these 1.8 AKLs. You don't want to send anything valuable up here. I also have a sub a squadron laying in wait. It is two submarines. What are they? The S-37 and the S-40. So these are actually decent submarines. Uh, and they're sitting up there. Okay, Port Moresby. He's still in this same situation where he's stuck in the hex. Uh, he doesn't have enough troops to take Port Moresby. Now we are starving but so is he. Uh, there's no way he can get a supply across here because we have this little nothing over here. This coy unit, uh, decoy, uh, decoy. Uh, he's got almost nothing. One assault strength, but he's in the way, right? And so they're not going to get any supply over here. And he's got 9,600 troops. What do we have? Let's go to the flag. We have all told between infantry and second line, we've got about 70. 17200 troops so he doesn't have us that badly outnumbered and now he's just marooned out here essentially he's gonna have to bring more and i am sure he is uh maybe this task force we've got to get these subs down here and try to uh harry him uh into you know uh, leaving a, a transport exposed or something and where we can get a shot off uh he's been bombing out of rabal he also has his carriers right there. You can see them. We've got good detection level on these. And you can see seven carriers and three tankers in this group. Um, 61 fighters, 180 bombers, and 32 recon or transport craft. Uh, wow. Okay. So he's just sitting here. Uh, he's got to get around here. And he's going to have to keep these guys here until he gets more forces there. Because he wants to protect them from the air. Uh, one thing we don't speak a whole lot about, oh, look at Port Moresby. You can see here the port is down to a one of two. He's knocked the airfield down to a three. Uh, okay, well, that's going to be your airfield at some point. But, you know, he's, he's, believe me, it's not a criticism. He should be bombing that. I'm just saying that uh, it's not all bleak that that's getting worn down, whether it be the port or the airfield for us, because eventually he's going to control it. Now, no Maya. I've got things coming in here as fast as I can get them in here. Why is that? Because I know exactly where his carriers are over here. Uh, now, the problem that I've had in this game is I've never played two-day turns before, and he can move these carriers. I mean, they could be at No Maya before the end of the next turn, and so you've got to be so damn careful. When you play one-day turns, I would see them move out. And they would be about right here, right? And I would say, okay, we got to get back to Auckland, guys, because here come the carriers. Do, do, do. Uh, but with this, he moves here, here. That's one day. Here, here. That's the end of the turn. And all of a sudden, I open up the next turn. I'm like, oh, crap. And we have lost a lot that way. I like the two-day turns. I would never play three-day turns. Forget about that. I mean, you know, 
that that makes the carriers way too powerful. They're already powerful enough on one day. Two day makes them even more powerful because they're also the fastest things on the map and they have the most range, uh, you know, when they get close, right, with the aircraft. So two day, you know, it's on the dividing line because man, have his carriers been powerful this game and they've caught us with our pants down a few times just because, uh, sometimes, I mean, you've got to get stuff to Nomaya. You can't just not do that, and it's just a matter of picking your spots. And because of that, it makes recon doubly, triply, quadruply, yeah, you name your oopily, it makes it uh, that much more important because you've got to know where these suckers are. And even if you do, it might not matter because they can move so fast. We saw that up in Bombay. Um, you know, they had rounded the corner at Colombo. We had some indication they had float planes out there, but they were at Bombay. The very, I mean, I opened up the next thing. I said, oh, shit, they're off the coast of Bombay. Well, uh, we're screwed, <laughs> you know. Um, and so just keep in mind, it really does matter the number of days per turn you pick uh, because those things move around like a very, very fast Death Star. Uh, no Maya. So I'm trying to dump onto here, right? We've got a base force that has now come in, the 114th. Uh, off of these transports, I've got the Bagley out here with the Holbrook, uh, and then I've got the Hole out here with Henry T. Allen and the Exmoor that's got the second Marine Regiment, all right? So we're dumping a U.S. base force and a Marine Regiment out here. I've got 18 Warhawks flying over the top. Now, these Warhawks are actually U.S. Army. I've got them in two U.S. Fighter Command. Uh, they really should be in the Army Fighter Command. Uh, and we don't really... We don't have a Fighter Command for the Army in the Southwest Pacific. We could just do Pacific Fleet or South Pacific. Um, so like 13th U.S. Fighter Command, South Pacific. That's an Army, Army Marine, Navy... Uh, this is uh, New Zealand, the Royal New Zealand Air Force. This is the U.S. Air Force, right? So getting used to these commands, the U.S. Bomber, U.S. Fighter Commands, those are Army commands, right? U.S. Marine Corps, that goes without saying. U.S. Navy, that goes without saying, right? Uh, same thing down here. Fifth U.S. Air Force Command, RAAF, you know what that is, nine group, ten group. Then you have 5th U.S. Bomber and 2 U.S. Fighter. I've got this in 2 U.S. Fighter right now. I guess that kind of makes the most sense uh, because anything else I put it on is going to be general. I mean, I could put it on Southwest Pacific, but that's yet to arrive. 2 U.S. Fighter is the only one on the map. I've got it over at Suva, I do believe. We'll go check it out. But before we do, I just want to mention that we've got... Uh, transports up at Afate, and we are dropping off or have already dropped off the base force out here. This is all the way from Catherine. So this, this you know, started all the way back here at Catherine, ended up moving out to the coast because I didn't need it there, got on a transport and is now out at Afate. We'll be bringing in Marine Corps units here, whether it be those Marine Defense Battalions, Raider Battalions, uh, Parachute Battalions, whatever they may be, uh, Afate and Luganville, two really important spots because a Big battles will be waged here because this is, you know, once we get out into the middle of 1942, this is going to kind of be the dividing line between Japanese territory and our territory. And if we let him get in here, all of a sudden, all of our shipping lanes go away. Because if he can sit here and refuel his carriers over and over, you'll never get anything out here ever again. So we got to fight like the Dickens to uh, keep these. Now, what do we have coming in here? We have a Koi unit. Uh, Australian unit that we've sent out here. We've got two transport groups, Dutch transport. Uh, they've already dropped off that Koi unit and we have a base force. This is out of Rockhampton of all places. Okay, so I've moved some of these out. Um, look at the aviation support. Now this only has eight. Usually out here, you wanna do one of two things. Early on, you bring Australian out here that's got an aviation support of 16. Uh, but some of them only have eight. You got to do what you got to do. But the American Marine ones, I believe, have 24. 
Let's see what this base force has. Aviation support 60. Well, okay. I mean, so some of these American ones have a lot of aviation support. Uh, now, of course, a big one's going to be on Suva. A big one's going to be on Pago. This has 36. I guess 36 was the number I was thinking about. What does this have? 60. Okay, so this is another 60 one. Um, and if you can get that amount of aviation support out to these islands, that's fantastic. Now, one thing I'll point out, Luganville starts out without an airport, or <laughs> airport, yeah, flying into DFW. Uh, expand airfield, you got to get that on. Get these engineers working on getting an airfield here because you can put Catalinas there and you can see everything up here with recon aircraft that way, uh, you know, doing naval search with the Catalinas. So you want to get Catalinas out here. Afate does not have an airfield either. Okay, so we'll want to expand that, uh, build fortifications. Uh, let's not expand the port until we know we've got a good supply situation out here. You don't want to spend all of your supply on building things. So we're going to want to expand and build uh, those two at the at those locations. Um, Suva, okay, you know, we've got, what, 25 Warhawks sitting here. Again, they're in two U.S. fighter for now until they get the Army command out here. I guess it's the 13th is what we'll be looking for. Um, so we'll get that out here. You can see we've got a lot of stuff. There's two U.S. Fighter Command. Uh, it gives, you know, a nice aviation support of 50. It's got the torpedo ordnance, so you can get your torpedo bombers loaded up over here. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we've got a lot of forces out here. They don't add up to as much as you would think. 243 on the assault strength, but we'll bring in more. Eventually, we'll probably have a, a division here, because if you look, Suva is worth 825 points to the Japanese. So, he's going to come here. I mean, that, that's a, a, a magnet, right? Uh, because you can't get 825 points many places on the map, and that's one of them. If we look at Nomaya... Uh, the value to us is 300. The value to him is 30. So, I mean, it's much more important to us than it is to him. But lo us losing 300 points is a big deal. Pago, 150 to Japan, 6 uh, value to us. So, you know, he's going to come here and he's going to come here. This hurts our points. This gains points for him. If we go down to Auckland, um, you know, I run so much out of Auckland, and look at all of these aircraft down here. You may say, why are all these aircraft down here? Well, because it's the safest place to bring them. You don't want to bring them directly into Suva, usually, because his carriers can get down here so fast. So I've got a base force headed out to Norfolk. So when you have new planes coming out to the Pacific, you can bring them to Auckland, jump them to Norfolk, Nomaya, Suva, Pago, and now all of a sudden, you know, you've got bases within range for every different kind of aircraft, and you can just flip them around here wherever the threat is. Uh, you could also bring them into Pago, and I do have, a, you know, uh, some planes coming in here. You can see I just dropped some off, and I've already transferred them over to Suva, so I've had a lot come in there, and you even want to build, maybe build up Penryn. Penryn, uh, if you build a little airfield out here, you can see I'm expanding it. You got to get some supply in there, but it's, you know, they can hop off of Penryn. Um, Tahiti is a little too far away, but if you did Tahiti to Rorotonga, uh, if they have drop tanks, they can get up to Pago. So just something to think about. You can see all of the shipping activity I have coming down here through the South Pacific. You know, I've got Tahiti and Haiva Oa. We've talked about those many times. Our refilling stations. I've now got stuff out on Rarotonga. So I've got, you know, just something every, I don't know, 15 to 20 hexes or so. Uh, but then you have this big gap all the way into Auckland where so many things happen. All right, are we going to do it? Yeah, we did it this time. Let's go over uh, to kind of the eastern edge of the map, and we'll look at the Panama Canal very quickly. Crystal Ball, we've got a lot going on here. We've got this group is unloading. This is out of the eastern U.S. This group is just sitting here right now. I sent them down here, and I made this their home base because I'm going to want them to go over to Auckland. So they're already docked. Uh, let's load that with supply. 
this the alcoa prospector has a huge endurance so they'll be able to go all the way to auckland and back uh, without refueling let's make sure that's true so we'll set that for auckland okay and if you look at this yeah it's 199 199 hexes out to auckland round trips 398 we make it so we'll turn that on do not refuel when it gets there we do want it to unload the cargo uh what's this up to yeah here's another group of ships uh that is all loaded up and ready to go now this is only 13 6 so something like this we may take to tahiti uh we may have it re fuel at tahiti so let's say we want to take this to Suva. Now, we'll give it a destroyer when it gets out here. I don't do it immediately, but we're going to have that go to Suva. Well, it can make it uh, just barely. 346, 346. Well, that's a little tight uh, for my liking. So what we're going to do is do waypoints. We'll do waypoint one. Set waypoint one. Okay... It wants to go just this way. Now, we could have it refuel at uh, Pago, but I don't like it to be that far north. Let's have Waypoint 1 be Tahiti, all right? When it gets there, we want it to do a minimal refuel. This will give it 10% more fuel than it needs to make the trip, okay? And then return by the same route, yes. So it's going to go out, go to Tahiti, up to Suva, back to Tahiti, and here, okay? Uh, so there's that one. And then this is loading supplies. I have not given this a destination yet. Why don't we just have that go, uh, I don't know, to Pago maybe? Sure. Let's have it go to Pago. Now, I, yeah, I can make it. Okay, could make it straight there and back. That's fine. Do not refuel. Excellent. If we could look back to the one I gave waypoints. Let's make that a do not refuel. That's what it does when it gets to its ultimate destination. So we do not want it to refuel at Suva. We don't want to soak up all of its fuel. Uh, I've already got this one. It's loading fuel going to Haiva Oa. So if we click off that, we still have it as the main. You can see where it comes on the map, and it goes straight into Haiva Oa. Okay. Uh, that all looks good. Did we have any ships in port? We did have a couple, a couple of AKs. Uh, 12 speed, 13, 600 endurance. We'll put it with this. 13, 6, and 12. The Willamoto. Putting like ships together. You can see they're identical. Now this will also load supply. Uh, and off that goes. And what was the other one? The Vito. Uh, Vito, hey, what's going on? 12, 300, 14 speed. Okay. Uh, that's got 14 speed. We could put it with that. This has got 12. Four, wow, the Prospector has 14. I'm kind of tempted to leave it on its own, but I'll just leave it there. Okay, well, the only guys that it makes sense for this to go into are here. 12300, the Veto, speed 14. Now, why is it showing that 11? Did you not see that? It said 14, right? Uh, does it have some damage? No. Well, let's take it back out of there. Uh, Vito, speed 14. What's going on? Um, let's try that again. That shows 11 down here again. Okay, well, I'll have to put the Vito on its own. Uh, that was weird. Uh, we've got all kinds of ships coming through here. Tankers, transport. What's on this transport? Oh, it's these APD ships. Well, I've got them going out to Haiva Oa to drop off this third hundred and second. Uh, and then they're going to actually, I want them to go back to Pearl Harbor uh, because they're, we're just going to sit on those until we start doing invasions later. So we'll just have those go back to Pearl Harbor, which is where we'll pick them up. Uh, let's go up to the U.S. East Coast and see if anything's going on. Okay, here we are. No ships in port. No aircraft. All right. Well, not a whole lot's going on up here. We've got two AKs that are loading supplies. They're a CS to Cape Town. A do not refuel CS. So they're going to Cape Town, coming back. They have the perfect amount of endurance to get there. Um, and they're just going back and forth, back and forth, dropping off supply at Cape Town. No other ships there. As I come down, 
you'll see uh, the only place I have anything back over here on this kind of eastern part of the western part of the map is at Ogden. And I've got all of these big B-17s out here training, getting ready to bring the pain. Uh, we've got, you know, I don't know, 50 or so of those. Uh, and I just have them all you know, train back here at Ogden. I can fly them up and transport them over whenever. Uh, you can see we've got all kinds of ships out here. We've got a big tanker task force going to Haiva Oa. I may just have this uh, continue on. We may get a little fuel, get topped off at Haiva Oa and go on to Australia. We also have, tr wow, this is a huge transport task force. I've got a light cruiser and three destroyers with it. Uh, we've got three APs. This has got the 108th Infantry, the 31st Aviation Battalion, or Base Force, I should say, which has got 49 uh, at least right now, I think it ends up having 60 aviation support if you fill that out. The 108th Regiment, this is just part one of it, uh, so that's not going to show us anything. Where's the regular? There it is. It's on the Santa Barbara 108th Infantry Regiment. You can see 122. This is part of the 40th Infantry Division. Where are its other components? Rockhampton. So we're going to take this all the way to Australia. Uh, let's see, is this task force, where's it headed? Haiva Oa first. Uh, we're going to top off a little bit, but then we're going to go all the way to Melbourne with this group. Okay, so a full aviation task force uh, or base force, um, 108th Infantry, and the 134th USA base force, so another base force. Um, so we got those going. What's happening in LA? LA, baby. Uh, we got 21 ships in port. Okay, you see the ACMs here, uh, minding, minding the mines, the Dorothy Luckenbach. Then we have a bunch of AK. Uh, I'm going to leave it here. I don't, uh, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot going on here. I think I'll wait until the Hornet comes in. When the Hornet comes in, we'll really come back here and look at some of this stuff. But the main thing is all my troops are coming to L.A. I've got all of my transports routing in and out of L.A. And all troops coming out into the Pacific. And you can see two that I've just sent out. Do we have some more out here? Well, these guys are going back. They're probably going to L.A. L.A. or San Francisco. That's all you need, really. Uh, Seattle up to uh, Alaska. Here's some tankers. They're going to Auckland. They're kind of out here. Well, they got two destroyers, the Henley and the Craven. Uh, but he's headed, you know, through here and on to Auckland. But anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there. When we come back, we're going to do the combat resolution uh, for what? February 25th and 26th. This is this big tanker task force. Yeah, this is coming out of Vancouver, CS goes just back and forth to Pearl Harbor with 50,000 tons of fuel every time. Um, when we come back, we'll be seeing what's going on in Cagayan up in the Philippines. As I get back over here, Cagayan, you know, he's in the same hex as us. Oosthaven, uh, Port Moresby, he's in the same hex as us. Uh, he's landed here. We'll see which direction he starts to head in Java. He's now landing here at Oosthaven. Super important there. Looks like his carriers are, you know, coming back down to Singapore. We're going to start stationing some subs here, right? A lot of action coming by there into Singapore. Uh, Rangoon, he'll keep bombing. Colombo looks like, you know, it survived this threat anyway, even though we lost some stuff. Uh, anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.